Hello, viewers. Welcome to a Breaking It All Down vlog in all its unprofessionalness. Because this is a vlog and not a full-on episode. Anyway, I just got back from Oricon. And I had a blast. I will be going next year. And none of you came and said hello, and I watched the show at the convention. But to be fair, I gave you about three days' notice. No, that's not right. Two days' notice. Two to three days' notice. So, I didn't give you enough notice. I apologize. It was my fault. I should have done something a couple weeks in advance. I should have given you a chance to pre-register the convention if you weren't going already, so you could meet my wonderful self. Anyway, so I had fun. I met a lot of interesting people, science fiction writers, fans, um, several great panels, and I'm going to pause it for a second, grab the program so I can give the names of some of the people at panels I went to. And thanks to the wonders of modern technology, it's like I was never gone, except for the very blatantly, clearly obvious jump cut, which shows that, in fact, I did leave and come back. So, on Oricon, the theme was the apocalypse. I admit there weren't that many apocalyptic panels there that I noticed, or if there were, I didn't go to all of them. And, yeah. So, but in particular, some of the panels that I went to couple old school, I mean, really old school science fiction fans um, were there from back east and points outside of Oregon. Um, Jer um, Jerry Kaufman, Ben Yellow, and Susan Tompkins. Um, ben is Ben Yellow is from New York, and the other two believe from Detroit. And these are great people. They are really old school, and they are perfectly willing to share their excellent knowledge of history of, in this case, the panels they gave here, but the histories of science fiction fandom all the way back to its origins, and one on fanzines. And if these guys are, if these people are at a convention, and they're giving panels, go to them. You will have fun, and you will learn something. And really, what more can you ask for from a panel at a convention? Learning something and having fun. That, that, that is... Ooh, it's like chocolate and peanut butter. So, there was that. Um, there was, during the convention, Occupy decided to do a march. Much to my pleasure, the Portland Police Department didn't have to do anything. The Occupy protesters didn't decide they wanted to start something with the Portland Police Department. The Portland Police, um, however you want to interpret this, so there was no tear gassing going on, no stuff being smashed or anything like that. Thus, there was no interruptions to Oricon. So, thank you to Occupy and the Portland Police Department um, for not causing the the innocent science fiction convention to get ruined or otherwise marred by hostilities. We appreciate it. Um, I didn't buy anything, but that's okay. Um, I did talk to people. I managed to persuade some people. I managed to discuss some particular, well, science fiction anime and bridging the gap once again between, well, the science fiction fans and anime fans. We've, we've kind of grown apart over the years as the... Well, the anime market in the United States is kind of, while the science fiction shows still come over here, it's kind of moved a little bit more towards non-sci-fi stuff. And but, but the science fiction stuff's still there, and I'd like to bridge the gap between the two again. And so I may have made some steps towards this. In particular, I hopefully did, did some successful work in selling people on the show Bodacious Space Pirates, which is really one of the best science fiction shows of last year. I would say, not just like Japanese animation, but science fiction in general, on par with Doctor Who. And, wow, when it comes science fiction television shows that are currently on the air, that's kind of all we got right now. That's sad. On par with Doctor Who. I really recommend checking it out. And I really think that it should be nominated for a Hugo next year 
in either the fields of best long form presentation for the entire ser- series, or I can't really think of one specific episode that really stands out because they're all really good. But on a single episode as well, I can see it st- meriting some nomination. Um, I will more aggressively be selling people on this series as the Hugo Award nomination season starts gearing up in 2013. And now I do need to go on a, a, do a bit of business and a slight rant. First, as I'm recording this, it is November 4th. The election is November 6th. If early voting is an option where you are, use it. If you can vote, if you're eligible to vote, if you've registered to vote, and if you can vote early, on Monday the 5th, pause this recording and go out and vote. Or shut your computer down all the way. Go out, vote, then come back and watch this video again and play the ads again and I get more money. Which is good, but still vote. Voting is better than me getting money. So there's that. Um, I would do the photo taken at the polling place don't forget to vote America thing, but you're supposed to do the nerd fighter hand signaling when you do that, and I can't get my fingers to go that way. Otherwise, the best I can do is a gang sign, and that would send the wrong impression. I can't even do a gang sign. Yeah, I... I maybe, kind of, not really. Um, no, I can't do the west side thing. So, there's that. Be, you be voting. Um, our other thing to talk about, and that is, I have a little feedback for next year's voters pamphlet. I live in the state of Oregon. We have a voters pamphlet. The Secretary of State's office sends us out every year for the general election. It's, or even for that matter, kind of primary elections. It's this one's big. It's a presidential election. We have a bunch of ballot measures a bunch of local and state races going on right now. So it's a big piece of... It's a big hunk of dead tree. Well, recycled dead tree. Um, By the way, when you're done with this and the election's over, recycle this. It's recyclable paper. Um, So, I have a few little comments about this. about About the voters' pamphlet and the stuff that's in it. I'm going to try to keep this nonpartisan. General, uh, early on this, um, I'm not going to endorse any candidates for any particular races. I'm just going to discuss the contents of particular listings for candidates and what is or is not there. The voters pamphlet does have an online version. When I'm discussing particular races, I'll try to put a link in what I believe is referred to as the doobly do with links to the reference in question, so that you can go see it if you are not in Oregon, or if you've misplaced your voter's pamphlet. And if you've misplaced your voter's pamphlet, shame on you. So, for each candidate, or race, you get a listing of, basically a description of the candidate that is sent by that candidate's campaign. Let's show, kind of show a picture of it up here. And is the whole thing and basically, ideally, what this does is it says to your vo- to a voter, this is why you should vote for me. This is what I'm going to do, and this is what I have done if I'm the incumbent. Um, the problem is some candidates don't get that, honestly. In particular, some several Green Party candidates. But first, before I get to this, the Constitution and the Libertarian Party candidates. None of them are listed. <clears throat> now you have to submit yourself to run. Right? You have to you have to send your listing. The state of Oregon will not create one for you. You have to provide your, your, you have to provide your campaign's information yourself. Now, admittedly, you may have missed the deadline. In that case, you you need to have people who handle this. You need to have this marked on the calendar. Here's the deadline. Get this information together. Ideally, get it together early in your campaign. 
because honestly, trying to be topical and sitting it to address particular candidates' remarks doesn't work very well when they're what when to a certain degree. This shows up over a specific period of time, and this shows up one time, but people may read it over a period of time. So by the time you get you submit this, this could be responding to remarks by a candidate, oh, say, a week before you send in the information, or the week before the deadline, or whatever. By the time this gets out, that particular issue, those particular remarks, may no longer be the running thing in the campaign. Either nobody cares, or they've retracted the statements, or they've been clarified, or they've said something dumber. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's, that's not the issue anymore. And you've limited your stuff to a particular moment in time. Further, honestly, if you are not able to publicize yourself very well due to lack of budgets or whatever in terms of mailings, television ads, radio ads, then you're in a situation where we as the audience, as the voters, your your intended audience, don't know what your platform is outside from your overall party platform. And with an overall party platform, that may not fit for specific parts of the country, or particular counties, or the state of Oregon in general, as an example, um, let's talk about Hurricane Sandy. If your part of your platform is we're going to eliminate um, FEMA and do this entirely through privatized services and nonprofits, if that was part, if that was part of your platform, your party platform, that's going to play really poorly in the areas of the Eastern Seaboard that just got clobbered by Hurricane Sandy. They say, hey, we need. We need a government response, a unified response, and a quick response without having to wait through wait for Habitat for Humanity and Northwest Medical Teams and the, and the Red Cross and all these other organ these other myriad organizations to get resources together. The idea is behind FEMA is you have a group who has the trailers standing by ever give people replacement housing. You have a group which has the money available to go on the scene and buy a bunch of food and clothing and stuff to get these people who have no food that they carry with them or very little food, who have medical emergencies, whether it's being diabetic or whatever, and get them what they need to live. And so they're not going to buy in well with the eliminate FEMA argument right now. G generally, there are probably some who it would go well with, but we're talking right now about catering your arguments to specific parts of the country. I don't want to get into flame war down here about FEMA or anything like that, and whether or not they're a vast conspiracy. Anyway, so your party platform for the entire country may not fit the needs of candidates in a particular part of the country. What plays well in Kansas doesn't necessarily play well in Oregon. What plays well in New York State doesn't necessarily play doesn't necessarily play well in Texas. That sort of thing. Um, the next part of this is, well, if you do run your run a listing in here, part of what you need to do is you need to look at this and say, all right. What am I going to do? Because what, as the the reader, when we're looking at this, particularly a third party candidate who again doesn't have the same degree of money and resources to spend on mailing um, attack ads or informing the audience of voters what your policies are, you need to say to us straight up, this is my plat, this is my platform, this is what I am going to try to do if I am elected to office. Not what they did. Not attack, don't, don't use this for attack ads. If you use the voters pamphlet for attack ads, what happens is that all you're saying is those guys stink. Or this one guy, the incumbent, stinks. 
congratulations, you've sold me on that you think the incumbent stinks. What you haven't sold me on is what are you going to do? And you can't just say, I'm going to be different from the last guy. I'm not going to do the things that he does that stinks. Let me give an example here. This is the entry for Christina Jean Lugo, who is running in the 5th District. Let me clear the vote, the Green Party in a different district, in other parts of the country, or, or state, get this lined up right. There we kind of... I'm doing this poorly, I apologize. There we go. I will link and link to below. Is she discussed in the listing? She argues about how the incumbents in their two parties have put us in wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, um, discussing how the, um, the current state of the economy and how it's, the economy is in poor shape, and we need positive change and move away from the. Th from the two-party system. It's all well and good, but what makes you what, you... what are you going to do? What sort of policies are you going to implement aside from just the policies of your overall party platform? Are you going to try and get a unified health care solution for the state of Oregon? Is that part of your platform? It, what, what that part of your platform? That's what you need to do. Is you need to, it's, it, otherwise, all you're doing is you made the conversation not about you, which when you're only listing, the only way we'll be seeing anything about you is in the voters pamphlet, is in this, you need to make the conversation about you. Not them, you. If you do that, then we have a reason to go, okay, we should. I should think about voting for this Lugo person as opposed to I shouldn't vote for this other person. I shouldn't vote for the incumbent. I should vote for someone who's not the incumbent who may not necessarily, depending on if it's a Democrat in office, might have actually do, be involved in policies that, that are the opposite of what the Green Party wants. Again, this is part of the reason why the, can the parties which did not list candidates, Constitution and Libertarian, should, ru should run listings in the voters' pamphlet. Even if part of your platform for the state of Oregon is to eliminate the voters' pamphlet as wasteful government spending, I don't know that until you've run your listing in the voters' pamphlet. I'll disagree with you. I feel the voters' pamphlet is useful, particularly for third-party candidates, because it, it allows candidates who don't necessarily have the money for mass mailings and signage and all that sort of thing to get their message out in a fashion that will reach every voter in the state of Oregon, whether that voter wants it or not. And, in the fact, and I think that's a valuable resource. Now, there's one other issue I have, and that's with the voters' pamphlet itself. And that is with how it is organized. I Now, I should mention my major in college is in health informatics. Informatics is the study of the science of how we use information, how information flows, how we manage it, and that sort of thing. And my complaint is this, how it's organized. This part here is the portion of the book that relates to ballot measures that for the whole state, statewide candidates for representative, all this, that, and the other thing. The problem is, is let me get this right, is this is the start of the entry for Measure 81. This is the back of the entry for Measure 81. Right over here. In the middle of this section that is death specific for Clackamas County, which is the county I live in. If you follow local news, we've had a recent bit of, a, of election fraud, which I'm not going to get into right now. But the point is, these two things these two and uh, this this these sections are numbered differently. Now the Clackamas County Voters pamphlet has a gray bar on the side to indicate that this is the section which is for your specific county. The problem with this though 
is they're numbered differently and they, they're, they're splitting information. I, if I want to read all the information for measure 81, I'd read the first section so I get my explanatory statement. Then I have to flip through a couple, oh, about, about just under 100 pages to get to the other side and to read the arguments in favor and arguments against about what we should do to, rather whether we should pass measure 81 or um, not pass it. And this is kind of awkward. I would, I, best way I could think of to fix this, I would think would be to, was to have the, basically, but the voters have it organized in such a fashion so that coming right out of the gate, they have enough space allocated in the back of the pamphlet for the dedicated county voters guide. Because I, I understand sort of why it's in the middle. Because that way, when they're assembling these, they can just open it up to the middle, drop the Clackamas County or Washington County or Marion County or Ki or whatever dedicated county voters pamphlets in the middle, staple them, close it, and send it out. But again, it just doesn't quite work well with in terms of the flow of information for the rest of the book. Um, yeah, frankly, I would think, in my opinion, from knowing enough on informatics, not to get myself in trouble, I, I know a bit more than that, but still, I think that really the county voters guide should be more towards the end. A ca allocate a little extra space in there or s something like that to make it easier to navigate the book and make it easier for people to get the information they need to hopefully be an educated voter because honestly with this you get enough information particularly for ballot measures where I would feel I feel comfortable as an educated voter just with this in terms of, perhaps with the sole exception of some of the candidates for local elections, local races, some of them are more divided on, in terms of divided on, a little less comfortable about what I know or what I don't know about the candidates, but I know a hell of a lot more with this book than I would otherwise. So there's my feedback for electoral candidates in next year's election for how to improve your listings to the voters' pamphlet, and hopefully, if the Oregon Secretary of State's office is watching this, maybe you might even be able to improve the voters' pamphlet in the years to come and make it flow a little better and make it easier to find the things I'm looking for. Or alternatively, if you have done studies about informatics and have something to explain why doing it this way is better than the way I'm suggesting, please, if you're with the State of Oregon's office and you have evidence to this, post in the comments. I will happily read them and respond to them if they are intelligent and from any other comments if they are intelligent and well well worded and non trolly but other than that so i've got my thoughts in there on the voice pamphlet again i will be going back to oricon next year larry elmore will be there next year so if you need incentive to go there other than my wonderful self you get to see here larry elmore which is awesome. Plus a whole bunch of other writers there who aren't the guests of honor who were who were there and who were awesome, like Stephen Barnes and Steve Perry and Todd McCaffrey. Just go to Oricon next year. You'll have fun. Trust me. Anyway, that's that. I will have next weekend, which is the next actually scheduled video, I will have Nintendo Retrospective number three. This is just kind of a placeholder thing because normally I put a video out on the weekends. Until then, I will see you next time. Thank you.